Well, let us talk now to Suha Arafat, the, the widow of uh, Yasser Arafat. Let me ask you first of all, in his final days in Paris, did he have any idea that he had been poisoned? No, but uh, he looked very sad. Uh, he was speechless. He could not talk because uh, he had, you know, he began to lose uh, conscious a little bit. But he was looking at me, uh, you know, in very teary eyes that telling me, you know, try to do something that there's, I, I'm deceived, you know, I'm being, there's something wrong with me. Uh, and I could understand this uh, from his tear. He was he had a teary eyes trying to explain to me. Uh, and we were doing all our best to find if there's any poison actually, but uh, no poison has been found. Did he at all in the last few years of his life, he, he did have a lot of enemies as well, did he not? Um, the, did he believe that somebody was trying to kill him at that point, if not that he had been poisoned? Did he all think that somebody life, was... Not only the last three or four years, all his life he has been subjected to threat, death threats and he escaped maybe 20 of uh, death threats in his life. But uh, it was very dangerous the last three years because he was stitched in the Bukata and the shelling was uh, every day. And Sharon, if you remember, was, uh, you know, uh, circulating him and bombing him every day. Of course, he was into a direct danger at last time. But uh, if you see that uh, they could not kill him, nobody could kill him uh, directly. They killed him cowardly in a coward way and in an indirect way and uh, like a hidden uh, crime. If it was not for uh, the heroic, if I may say, Clayton Swisher and his team that were working for two years, uh, we would not have been here. It's a very committed journalism. I'm proud of this committed journalism. To, to have, you know, to arrive what we are arriving today. Well, what made you think that this was worth pursuing in the first place? Because it's almost 10 years, 10 years or nine years um, next week or it so that he Clayton died. It was Clayton Swisher who convinced me. I, uh, I will tell you frankly, in the beginning, I was not convinced. I was, what he wanted from his belongings, what he wanted from his, uh, you know, uh, why, why he wanted the belongings, uh, and slowly, slowly, as if it's a divine message, uh, we discovered that he had polonium. And the scientists advised me that I had to go further, to go into his tomb. And with the approval of the Palestinian Authority, we went further. And now, yesterday, we had the results. And we had positive 83% polonium in his body. Were there many people who didn't want you to go as far as having his body exhumed? Yes, of course, a lot of people, but they would not say it uh, immediately. And President Abbas uh, did a very good job that he accepted. Uh, actually, uh, an, any kind of not acceptance by any person would mean other, other things. So everybody had to accept, accept my demands uh, to uh, you know, exhume his body. Uh, in spite of a lot of objections, uh, we exhumed it. I want to ask you about a specific period of 17 days from when he first fell ill to when he died. Did you have your suspicions that something had been given to him to make him sick? Yes, because it was not natural. And day by day, the doctors would come to me and they said, we find nothing. Uh, we've done every single test uh, that exists in the world. They had 50 uh, doctors from all over the French hospitals and they could not make a spe special, specific diagnosis of his illness. So, so, so you had your suspicions? Of course, but we could in, not in, prove it. In which case, why did you allow his body to be buried so quickly without any proper it medical examination? It was not to me, you know, usually we're Muslims and we take the body immediately to be buried. E and even in cases where murder no, is a possibility? Everybody was convinced, especially the Palestinian Authority, that he died, uh, there was no reason, and the French told us there's nothing, no reason uh, that he died. So it, the body was not with me. It went immediately to Ramallah and it was buried. So and did you try to object because you had your concerns? I could not object. It was too political. It was, I was alone. It was so difficult. Already it was so difficult in the hospital, if you remember. So uh, it never occurred to me to ask. And nobody told me that it should be done. So I, it never occurred to me to make an autopsy. Actually, even if we have done the autopsy, the Parliament 21 was not discovered as a poison at last at time. Only we discovered it when uh, little Vinko died uh, in London 2006. Uh, let, let me ask you, Mrs. Mrs. Arafat, why did you not allow Yasser Arafat's physician for, for many years, Dr. Al-Kurdi, 
Why did you not let him, who knew this man medically better than anybody else, near him when he was dying? It's not true. It's not true at all. Actually, uh, we had to leave. It's not true. We had to leave to Paris and we had uh, 50 French doctors who are around him and we had other doctors, uh, the Tunisian doctors, and it was in the hospital because mm. the but French... Can I just tell you something that he says? Yes, These he are said, his words. Yes. Um, I would usually be summoned to attend him immediately, even when all he had was a simple cold. But when his medical situation was really deteriorating, they chose not to call me. Why, why was that? You, you know, I don't want to speak any bad things about him because he died. So, uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, to comment, to comment. It's worth, worthless commenting on this, uh, you know, so basis. You, you, ma you, you maintain it was personal rather than professional? It's not, it's not, it's not professional. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not true. The French had their own rules in the hospital. Uh, you know, they want to examine and they don't want anybody to boss them in this case. You know, it's when you go into a hospital and you give all your confidence to French doctors, they were the only doctors who could uh, investigate his illness. What do you think about the fact that uh, soon after he had died, uh, Nabil Shath, who was then the Palestinian foreign minister, uh, said we can completely rule out the use of poison here. What do you think of statements like that coming from the, the heart of the Palestinian rule Authority out, you mean, uh, that now that you know? He that there's poisoned. no, no, uh, he, he said this because there has been a lot of uh, actually uh, statements that were not founded and they were not true. Uh, a lot of journalists uh, were speaking things which, you know, that proves that not to be, not to be true. I don't know if Dr. Nabil Shahid said uh, really this, but I, I can't comment on something that I, I'm not sure of. But uh, but um, now we have the proofs. Uh, I think it's better that we speak in the present that we had the proofs. And all the media statements that has been there, uh, blah, 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 it was not really founded. Founded. You were quoted last year as saying that uh, in many ways you wished you hadn't married him, that being married to Yasser Arafat was, was a very, very yes, difficult thing. Of course, of course. I said, I said that in a context that uh, uh, it was so much difficult. You had to pass through character assassination for 20 years and accusation uh, in all kinds of things that you think that they're talking about other, other person. So I said it was so much difficult to face the whole world alone and to face injustices. I loved this man and I told this journalist who made an interview with me 20 years ago and she came back. I said, my goodness, you don't know what happened through all these years. It was so, I loved this man. I still now love this man, but it was, you had to pay a huge price from your nerves, from the character assassination, uh, from people judging you uh, incorrectly. It, this was uh, the only reason what I said this. And so now knowing that he was probably murdered and having helped to pursue the investigation your, yourself, where does that leave you emotionally? My goodness, I, I, uh, some people would tell me it's a closure. I can't close uh, a, a wound that is open. Uh, it's, it's injustice to kill, uh, uh, you know, the great, great leader like Arafat uh, because he never did any concession to anybody and he was stuck to all uh, the Palestinian, uh, you know, things about the right of return, about uh, Palestine, about Jerusalem. So it was it's so difficult. I'm, 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 I'm really proud of him, but it's so sad. It's a shock. It's a shock for myself. It's a shock for my daughter. Uh, you know, an elected president to be killed in this uh, very uh, uh, coward, it's coward, people are coward, could not kill him in face, could not kill him uh, in a whip weapon uh, or in the battlefield. Do you they think they'll find cowardly. his killers? Hmm? Do you think they'll find his killers? I hope. The answer is not with me. The answer is in Al-Mukata. Do you Al think they will? I, I, I hope it's not, the, you know, we have had two phases now, uh, the doubt and then the, the certainty. And the third phase would be, I hope, to find who killed him. It's, the answer is not in my, uh, in, with me. The answer is in the Mukata with the Palestinian investigate, uh, in investigation committee that should find the real, uh, uh, the real person who did it. Well, thank you, Suha Arafat, for coming on this Al Jazeera News. Thank you very much indeed.